I'll go over on the uh, transitioning towards an uh, intelligent uh, spend management. Myself, uh, Srijan Goganini, I've been uh, with SAP for almost 18 years. And uh, most of my 18 years working towards the integrations, point-to-point -point integrations so far. But uh, I think uh, the IES, uh, which has been uh, trying to address, will help a lot for the customer's point of view to uh, enter into experience. And a disclaimer, it's just a simple uh, uh, proprietary to SAP and confidential. And uh, let's deep dive into the agenda, which uh, basically I think uh, uh, let's understand the intelligent framework, what exactly is it, and uh, how exactly it's been adopted in a source to pay process, where we'll see the overview of uh, the complete end-to-end -end source to pay process. and. Uh, and go through uh, our deep dive into a technology highlights where we can see how all these intelligent endpoints or touch points come together to give a better experience to the customers. And then following, we'll have a demo. I hope it will work because it's a live demo, which I will try to show it in the, uh, in the demo systems. And uh, then we'll uh, go through the, the key takeaways, uh, what exactly we're going to be delivering, and then uh, following with a roadmap and a QA session. OK, jumping into this slide, I think uh, this slide you have been uh, seeing from last couple of days in various sessions, which completely talks about the intelligent enterprise, where what data and why data comes together with the help of intelligence. It will help the customers to do be a proactive rather than a reactive, right? So more an operational data gives you what exactly has been done. Based on that, basically, you can only make some assumptions and do a proactive actions. Whereas with the help of uh, wide data, which will clearly give, uh, we don't need to assume anything. We can see what, why there is a big uh, downtrend versus uptrend in operational data so that we can proactively make sure we can improve or uh, improve the uh, processes to help uh, the business, basically. So for that, uh, SAP is going to be providing a digital uh, platform which will help our customers to adopt the end-to-end -end business process and turn the data into a digital value, basically. And uh, the intelligent enterprise is just more than an ERP. The whole uh, platform is going to provide the customers to help or manage the end-to-end -end process with the help of all the applications. Uh, on the left-hand side, you can see all different various LOB applications. Uh, with the help of that, uh, we should be able to define the whole end-to-end -end process either through on the cloud using the hyperscalers, AWS or Azure or cloud, or in a scenario where customers, if they have already in an on-prem, this is basically it's a mixed hybrid, uh, hybrid mode. They should be able to manage uh, within this, uh, with the help of this framework. And uh, basically, it also helps to manage centrally the extensions framework if standard functionality doesn't help the customers. It has a central uh, ability to extend with third-party applications or a custom uh, applications within using our extension factory to create uh, or to build the differentiating digital applications uh, to improve the experience to capture the data, basically. So basically, the vision of uh, IES is to provide the complete end-to-end -end processes where I think in the last keynote also, Jurgen presented that uh, it's going to be a force of process, which is lead to cash, design to operate, total workforce management, and source to pay, where I'm going to deep dive into how exactly that process is. But if you look at it, the whole, overall, the IES consists of these main four processes. And uh, these processes covers most of organizations, 80% of the processes. Uh, within the, uh, to deliver this uh, four main business process, we, uh, we have a strategy with the help of architectural standards, uh, which will bring the, uh, the whole program into the reality. So the first pillar or first block, it says about the reference architecture, 
which is basically helps the all of the LOB applications to bring in a consistent manner and uh, provide a standard under the guidelines to make sure it provides the value flows and the scenario implementation diagrams with the help of those architectural references everybody should be able to understand how each process or sub process connects together to make a seamless experience for the customers. And the other important aspect is the core integration which we have been talking about uh, from uh, all these a couple of sessions uh, basically the core integration is not just a point to point or a technical integration or a technical connectivity it's more beyond like uh, the alignment between the applications or a standard api alignment so the core integration helps all of the lob applications to align on the apis as well as align the DMA models, which is domain models. Like maybe you might have seen the same object, like a, a supplier object is being called as a supplier in a river network, or in an S4, you may see it as, or as a vendor. So even though it is the same entity, we have been calling it differently. So that is being redefining uh, to align, basically. We are calling, coming up with as, with as a supplier object, and similarly, there are some objects which will be rolled out uh, uh, this year and uh, next year to have that consistent user experience. And the other, the fourth element is, uh, the third element is, sorry, the application lifecycle management. With the help of this, we should be able, to, our customers should be able to manage all the applications from an end-to-end -end process seamlessly with the few clicks and buttons rather than waiting for a long time to provision the systems and with the help of uh, even the security and identity management strategy. So the whole uh, end-to-end -end process will have a unified security model so that way user doesn't need to manage lots of username passwords to perform a business process which uh, starts from starting to the ending. So within a single sign-on, we should be, a user should be able to do or perform a specific task uh, in various applications. At the same time, the experience is an, another aspect we have been trying to address to make sure it has a consistent user experience across all the LOB applications, where we can see a consistent uh, headers, footers and uh, logos and the font sizes have a consistent actions and all those been uh, uh, is been aligned and also the another aspect is the analytics having a standard tool across all the application is also a, a way where the customers should be able to view the analytics either in a specific embedded scenarios or if the scenario spans across the multiple application, we should be able to uh, use the same tool to bring all the data and see and act accordingly uh, on a proactive scenario. Again, uh, this is another view of the digital platform, the IES digital platform. Basically, with the help of those main four pillars, which is the uh, integration and the data management, analytics, it brings all the value of uh, the business processes in a central, uh, centralized uh, in, with the infused intelligence. The customer should be able to get the uh, business value out of it. At the end of the day, IES, what uh, is being trying to address is to redefine the end-to-end -end customer experience, not only from a user or a UX level point of view, Basically, we want to redefine the overall, the consumption of the service, end-to-end -end provisioning, end-to-end -end service is being uh, planning to uh, redefine. So it makes easier kind of a self-service kind of approach. And the other major item is we are trying to deliver uh, or we have been making or converting the manual processes and making it a digitized approach to make the productive gains for the customers. But still, there is a lot of opportunity for us to 
embed the analytics as well as the intelligence to step change the productivity for the customer point of view to get more productive gains. And the, at the same time, uh, we need to make sure the overall user experience helps the workforce management to engage properly in uh, performing their day-to-day -day business processes. Let's deep dive into a source to pay overview. Again, uh, this is the another view of uh, how all those four processes connect together to provide an entire value chain for a given organization. If you look at it, uh, if you see, uh, if we take an example of an, any given organization, if they are trying to introduce any product which could be uh, they're planning to launch into the, uh, into the market, which would fall under the design to operate area where they can uh, adopt the, uh, the overall prototypes and everything, making sure that this design really helps to the customer audience, then to manage that uh, overall the production or anything, the total workforce management helps the process, helps the organization to manage the whole employees and uh, workforce and uh, uh, hire to retire scenarios. And uh, again, source to pay is gonna be coming into the picture to manage the sourcing for, from uh, vendors as well as uh, managing the relationship from an end-to-end -end process to procure, to build that products. And once the product has been designed or developed, then a lead to cash comes into the picture, where how do they market their product? How do they sell to the customers, for their customers? So all these four processes connect together some way. The other way, it's not parallel process. It's somehow the, the uh, integration touch point somewhere seamlessly uh, it connects together to provide the whole value chain proposition for the customer. Again, let's uh, into deep diving into the source to pay. Within the source to pay, we have a different LOB applications and uh, coming together to provide a seamless experience to the customer is where uh, we see it. And uh, it's been divided into two main aspects, which is the sourcing, uh, strategic sourcing, as well as the intelligent procurement where uh, these two, uh, sorry, uh, these four LOBs uh, align together to help on the spend management where you have a direct spend and a indirect spend as well as a services spend. So SAP Ariba is for HANA, field glass, and a digital supply chain. Okay, so if we deep dive more further into uh, the source to pay process, we have bucketed mainly four main buckets. You can see on the top one, source, source to contract, sourcing and contract, and a planning forecast, buy and delivery, invoice and pay. But the un underneath the, 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 the common elements where you see here the trading partner and the risk management, which is the common element, uh, depends on the scenarios what the customers adopt into the, the process either some customers only do provision or implement the sourcing and contracts or a planning and a forecast. It's all been modularized based. So uh, it's not necessary that every, every customer has to implement the whole end-to-end, -end, but it provides more value and uh, all these dots connect together to provide a, a seamless experience basically. And uh, you can see here, uh, in the sourcing and contracts, it helps you to uh, create a category strategy where you can uh, invite these suppliers. And then, so, and uh, the other aspect is that uh, we have been renamed or has been uh, changed the way how we see the suppliers in a trading partner perspective because uh, supplier is more a specific area of a material supplying model versus if you see the trading partner is a broader aspect where it types of a supplier or it can be a service provider or it can be a logistic provider. So that's the main reason why we have been projecting as a trading partner rather than a supplier, specifically in a niche model. So with the trading partner relationship and the risk management, it will completely give an overview how do we manage the risk and how we mitigate it, as well as how do we manage the relationship between the uh, trading partners. 
and uh, at the same time the analytics and intelligence comes into the picture which will help the uh, uh, customers to envision or improve the whole uh, pay process basically and at the same time the collaboration from the uh, sourcing to all the way to the pay, pay model uh, and uh, they can manage all the business rules in a central place to make sure the whole uh, the end-to-end -end process works seamlessly and uh, and then we are, I'll show through the, the demo where we can pick one of the scenario and then uh, we can see how exactly a, a indirect procurement can be performed from all the way to source from a, a catalog or, or a, a, a purchasing item from a catalog and then all the way to send it to the supplier and then uh, we can see how exactly that item is being received and how we invoice them to the cust to the uh, organization. We'll see the, the demo. And let's jump into the integration, basically technical view of how exactly this source to pay process is been adopting or aligned with the whole IES program. So you have a vertically and horizontally, you can see uh, the, the, five, uh, the four sub buckets, source to contract or a, a plan to forecast, a buy and delivery, and invoice and pay. So if you see the, uh, the, the layers, the all uh, integrating uh, together and uh, the list of line of business participating to, to support the overall S2P process. Uh, you see the SAP Ariba, S4 HANA, Field Glass, and IBP. And uh, so these are all things glued together with the help of uh, SAP Cloud Platform. That's where we have the platform services or reusable services, we should say. Uh, and uh, to provide that consistent user experience where you can see a single uh, workflow can be used across uh, not only the source to pay, it's also the other three uh, processes uh, and uh, have a s seamless single sign-on. A user can jump in from between the application to perform the whole process uh, without even uh, need to remember uh, lots of passwords, which, which is how it's happening today. And uh, the integration is the, the key aspect where I was referring the API alignment between the each LOB applications has been done, so technically a customer doesn't need to do the API integrations or uh, so SAP provides out of the box integration and uh, the governance where the, the whole uh, complete, uh, the, uh, uh, the uh, access controls can be managed centrally. And uh, you can see the other business services where uh, SAP Ariba has been provided the onboarding services where today uh, Ariba Network has been uh, participating to onboard any new trading partner, so which is also planning to uh, available in SAP Cloud Platform, so that way each and every other LOBs can also start reusing it rather than having a silos versions of onboarding the suppliers. So uh, with the help of uh, onboarding service, all other, not only Ariba network, the uh, logistic business network or, or the asset management or even a field glass. So all has been, been uh, gonna be leveraging the onboarding service and as well as the supplier service is also been uh, used as a reusable services. And if you see the, the, the bottom layer, which is the, the main piece which helps to orchestrate all these applications or provisioning seamlessly to the customer. With the help of few clicks out of the box, all the, the whole sub-process, like a, let's take an example of a, if a customer wants to only use the sub-process of sourcing and contract. With the help of the overall the APIs and the provisioning, the customer can do a self-provisioning and as well as uh, the uh, standard configuration out of the box would be applied, so they don't need to do any manual steps, basically. So as soon as the provisioning is done, you should be able to use the standard configuration out of the box. Okay, this is the another landscape view when we provision a source to pay. You can see here, this is the, uh, 
Cloud ALM, which will help the overall lifecycle management of the applications. And uh, you can see the here in this scenario, just uh, uh, I represented only the S4 HANA, but uh, the next uh, 2020, we will be seeing the field glass and uh, the IPP applications also. For 1911, this would be available uh, right away as soon as we start provisioning for any new customers. You should be able to do out of the box all these, the applications uh, where the integration uh, provided on the SAP Cloud Platform through the Cloud Integration Gateway and uh, Ariba Network will be providing for the supplier management or trading partner management and the, the uh, buying application platform where your procurement, uh, addition, sourcing and master, master data services would be available. And if you look at the core services by default will be provisioned uh, for the source to pay customers is like a identity, governance, authentication, and provisioning. So when a user is navigating or performing a specific uh, process uh, which he need to navigate from Ariba sourcing applications to S4 or, or to the Ariba network, he doesn't need to manage multiple usernames and passwords. Seamless uh, a single sign-on integration would be available. And the other aspect is that a business services is also coming into the picture where we are trying to reuse or are providing a central launch pad from where the customers can log in and uh, navigate the user, uh, navigate uh, from one application to another application through the cross product navigation, or, and uh, also manage all the tasks uh, through using one central inbox. And uh, you can see a federated search where you should be able to, if you are planning to search something related to S4 or uh, guided buying, you should be able to do that behind the scenes. It's going to do the federated search and provide the results uh, experience will be much more better than uh, what we have been doing it. And, uh, and here you can see the new, the new DMA model, which I was referring, which is the domain model alignment. Cost center is a one uh, object and a few uh, more like a suppliers, customers, and these are all objects would be adopted across all the application or participating applications of a given process. So there is no uh, uh, basically additional uh, integrations need to be done out of the uh, by the customers itself like uh, we do provide out of the box and. Uh, um, if we jump into the overall the data flow, how exactly the data flow looks like, it depends on how or what scenario. I know it's more uh, busy, crowded end-to-end uh, uh, -end data flow of the, the source to pay. It depends on the, the scenario, what customers planning to implement or, uh, or across end-to-end -end scenario. So either the start, uh, it can start through either uh, spend analysis where any organization wants to see where exactly the whole spend has been going on or what are exactly the items we have been spending most of uh, our uh, organization, they can realize and see if they can do a sourcing uh, with a strategic sourcing and invite uh, various suppliers to improve or get a better pricing and uh, reduce the overall cost. So if you look at this uh, from here, they should be able to initiate the uh, sourcing and going via Ariba network, it could be, uh, and then uh, we award a supplier, and then that becomes an outline agreement and goes back into uh, S4 HANA system uh, through uh, cloud integration gateway. And then once the outline agreement is done, any tactical or strategic uh, uh, the procurement is done, it can be used against that outline agreement. And then uh, also we should be able to negotiate it as a, a contract if needed uh, based on how it's been done, uh, how we are planning to, our customer planning to do it, either it's a yearly based or multi-year contracts, you can negotiate the supplier and uh, that contract also can become an outline agreement and that contract can be used against uh, any purchase orders or even uh, once the outline agreement is also done, we should be able to create a catalog and publish it into invoice management and then how the, all the, the whole end-to-end -end supply chain or the commerce automation comes into the picture where 
you should be able to create a purchase order to invoice or or uh, inter uh, implement the service entry sheet invoices and various all the whole list of uh, all these uh, messages and uh, at the end of the day the payment is what uh, the uh, the customers should be able to pay the suppliers through via banks to uh, through the Ariba network payables or at the same time uh, we do uh, manage the single sign on where all these actions uh, being performed by a, a persona from uh, from a spend visibility to sourcing or to the contracts or the invoice management the user should be able to cross navigate uh, from uh, application to application uh, through the single sign on uh, through the sap idm and governance of access controls and at the same time all this data can be uh, uh, be viewed through the analytics, through the centralized, either it could be a specific to a given application where you can see how many outline agreements has been done on a yearly basis, which is an embedded scenario within application, or if the use case spans across the multiple applications, then also that scenario also be available in the HANA cloud basically. And at the same time, uh, the uh, extensibility or partner APIs are also available to consume to make the 100% uh, of the whole process uh, to the end-to-end uh, -end scenarios where you can also, if you want to extend an APIs, you can do that through the whole IES framework. And so this is the complete, uh, the uh, crowded, busy, uh, the overall data flow. Again, this is one uh, of the sub process which talks about uh, in detail to see how the messages has been flowing between the two applications uh, here, Ariba Commerce Cloud, uh, where you can see the roles of uh, uh, the purchaser and a warehouse clerk. And uh, within the uh, SAP Ariba, the sales suppliers roles comes into the picture to perform the overall end-to-end -end process. Like when you create a purchase order, it goes through the API alignment between the applications. So where if we compare with what uh, the customers has been doing versus what it will be available when out of the box provisioning is done uh, this uh, 1911 after 1911 and uh, 2002 releases. Basically, these are all uh, out of the box will be available for the customer. Customer doesn't need to do explicitly any technical integrations. So a standard flow or a standard API integration is available out of the box. So the supplier should be able to respond, confirm the whole purchase order, and send the confirmation back, which gets updated again as the purchase order. And if they think that it's a, if there is a update needed, either line item update or a, li a delete a line item should also trigger a purchase uh, update and go back again, the whole cycle goes through. And then if the supplier uh, is ready to send the shipment notice, uh, should be able to send the notice. And then the warehouse clerk should be able to respond with the receipt saying that the goods has been uh, received and which will help the whole process to trigger an invoice if the, the overall business process has been uh, managed through as uh, the invoice can only be done through a, a receipt notice and then how the, uh, the payment gets released to the supplier. So the whole end-to-end -end process would be available out of the box. And uh, this is the key principles of what IE has been uh, trying, to, trying to address uh, from, a, a, from a, a user experience point of view or a, an integration point of view. So if you look at here, out of the box, the API integrations are uh, available. So there is no technical uh, implementations or uh, uh, API integrations need to be done by customers. It is gonna be available out of the box when the time of the provisioning. And uh, it is also uh, open uh, integration where it doesn't need to be end-to-end uh, -end process need to be implemented. It's more you can pick and choose the use cases and uh, sub-processes. And uh, if the current uh, S2P sub-process doesn't fill or fit the customer's use case, it is open to adopt the integration with the third parties or a provider uh, solutions also to provide that 100% end-to-end experience. 
and uh, it's all all the integrations all again uh, holistically and uh, uh, all the uh, AI driven so that way it helps to bring that operational data and uh, and the uh, experience data to to the center of the intelligence which helps the uh, to turn the business uh, data into a business value again uh, this is the roadmap of uh, uh, the overall uh, for 2019 and uh, 2020 so where we categorize the functional enhancements and a, a seamless user experience intelligence and analytics and integration excellence so you can see out of the box, the FISA process, what I was referring, is going to be uh, available in 19.11, and uh, which is the uh, indirect spend. And uh, next year, 20.02 and 20.05, we'll be releasing the, the uh, direct uh, spend and services spend. So you can see, and also the other aspect is uh, the one master data. Moving forward, uh, which is one of the uh, that uh, API integration alignments also. So current, uh, the challenges for the customers is that uh, there is a more a duplicate master data in more than one place. With the help of the uh, IES uh, intel, uh, intelligent experience of the platform, it will, uh, it will give a simplified one master data experience with the help of the domain model management and a single source of truth for or single source of governance at a central place uh, it will be uh, available for customers so to avoid all that uh, duplication of data. Yeah. It's a, it's, it is a separate, uh, basically the question is uh, where exactly the master data service would be available. So it is a, a separate a centralized instance based on a tenant specific, like uh, when the whole S2P process, when we provision the S2P process, uh, there are four, uh, I think, let me switch to back to one uh, so that may clarify. Okay, so the participant applications within the the whole source to pay process is uh, these main four LOBs, but there are fundamental background applications needed to support the whole business process, right? Which is one of them is single sign-ons, which is SAPI, DPIM, and similarly, the, uh, the master data is also one service, which behind the scene, it will be available uh, for the customer to manage or governance the whole master data end to end. And similarly, the SAP cloud uh, analytics, I think, uh, it's not over here, but uh, uh, the cloud analytics, I think here, yeah, the cloud analytics, and similarly, I think, uh, I haven't listed out the others, it's, it's too many to list it out. So the master data would be also part of the business service, which will be available for a given customer when they provision the whole S2P process. And let's jump into the demo. I think uh, the demo which I'm gonna be going over here is one of the sub-process where, I think two sub-process here, so uh, which is basically a, a indirect materials, uh, a user with a, a buyer, uh, sorry, the buyer roles of a purchaser or a warehouse clerk uh, within the S4 HANA and uh, within the uh, Ariba guided buying application, we have an, an employee role with uh, approvers. So basically an employee is trying to purchase an iPhone and then which need to be approved by an approver within the, uh, within the shopping cart, which goes back into the procurement engine, which triggers uh, requisition into a purchase order and then uh, sends out to the supplier who provides the uh, the uh, iPhones for this organization. And uh, in this case, the supplier with a sales rep or an accountant has the uh, roles uh, into the picture to, to submit uh, the confirmation and release the shipments as well as uh, the invoice. Uh, and uh, also the warehouse clerk is gonna send a goods receipt once the product is being received. So now we can see all these dots like uh, which is uh, basically the integration touch points, APIs, what we have been referring and the provisioning and a single sign on and all these comes into the picture. 
So this process is nothing new uh, for, uh, for, uh, for the customers, but the main aspect is that how all these applications or these process connect together out of the box when uh, it gets provisioned is the key aspect. And uh, the standard configuration, uh, how it is uh, been done, and then how uh, we can see the overall, uh, the whole end-to-end -end process. Okay, so I'm logging in here. This is the S4 application where here, uh, you can see here, uh, Okay, here uh, where you, this is the, uh, I think the new user experience will be rolled out in 1911, where you can see a standard footers, headers, and uh, through across all the applications, part of the applications, but uh, I think uh, with the 1908 release, the API integration is already released. And uh, you'll see here, so now here uh, within S4, we have a tile uh, Ariba guided buying with a single sign on. When you click it, the user doesn't need to remember the username passwords for guided buying or the or S4, but uh, I did save uh, the username password, so that's why I didn't ask the username password for me. So this is the uh, the guided buying application where uh, where you can come in here as I, as I was referring. Let's switch to here as a guided buying as an employee. I logged in and then I'm gonna search for uh, iPhone, and then it shows me the list of iPhones available. I'm gonna pick one iPhone and then add to the cart, and then I'm gonna check out, and then uh, basically let me make sure that a whole, okay, I see that the approver, uh, my manager is Ben Sherwin, so as soon as I'm gonna send the request, it's gonna be uh, approval is needed from Ben. We'll log in as a Ben to approve this process. Okay, so now the purchase, uh, the purchase requisition 452 is being created, which is behind the scenes if you look at the API integrations. So guided buying sent a request to S4 procurement engine to make sure that, hey, there is a, still uh, the budget is available to make sure that I can order a request, right? And then uh, the, uh, the budget is available, so that's why it is allowed me to, to create an, a request and now it is uh, waiting on Ben Sherwin's inbox to approve it. Now let's log in as a Ben Sherwin. I'm gonna use a different browser just to make sure because, uh, okay, I'm gonna. I'm gonna copy the username password. And I stored the username password, so it's not gonna ask me. So now I can, this is the, the same guided buying application with a different persona, approval persona. So I have the uh, interface here with the your approvals. So if I go to my approvals uh, and inbox, which is 452 is the one which I created. I think, uh, yes, 452. So now as a, a Ben Sherwin, I'm uh, approving it. So now it's out from my box, and then we, if we go back to the employee screen, now this should be uh, should be turned into a different status, saying that it's been ordering, versus earlier it is waiting for an approval. Now we can go back and see uh, earlier uh, when we sent the purchase requisition. You can see the whole history of the. Uh, of this request. The first it created the requisition, which is this number. And then uh, uh, after the approval, uh, it's been uh, created. It's, uh, it, currently, this system has a workflow uh, setup, which uh, with the certain amount of an order value, it has an auto ordering procedure, or there is, it depends on how the use case is. In this use case, we have the the process has been set in as a uh, auto ordering. So that is the reason why it showed it as a, it's in an ordering state, which will create a basically a purchase order 
if we go back to that uh, overall flow diagram, so here the, I created a request and then uh, executed into orders. Now, uh, now let's go back and see the purchase order. If we go back to S4 HANA, I think uh, this is the first tab which talks about, now I think I copied it. Let's see, let me make sure, okay. I copied it and then now we can see the requisition. So you can go to here, manage purchase requisitions and you can search for that requisition. So select the iPhone, select the line item. Now you should see a process flow here. So within the process flow, it shows that uh, the requisition is, once the acquisition is approved, now it triggered a purchase order. The ordering is also completed. Now let's go to the, 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 the separate persona, which is as a supplier, we'll log in into to the Ariba network. I'm gonna log in as a supplier. This is the uh, supplier uh, networks supplier portal where this is the uh, one stop shop for a supplier perspective. He can manage the all the supplier aspect. Like uh, if the supplier has been invited into that sourcing, the whole S2P process, the whole uh, one of the sub scenario, this uh, user interface will help the supplier to manage all the uh, activities, participating activities. Uh, through this portal, one uh, central entry point for the suppliers where he should be able to manage all the inbox. If it, this is, if the uh, supplier already established a relationship, then yes. If the supplier is participating into a sourcing or in a contract from this user interface, he should be able to log in uh, and then uh, perform all the requests from the uh, buyers basically. So now in this uh, user scenario uh, or in this uh, demo, we'll go to jump into the new orders where I, let me double check the purchase order number. Okay, the purchase order is number is 295. Okay, here we go. We should be able to take action. The supplier should be able to action like a completely entire purchase order. In this scenario, I'll do the complete purchase order acceptance where I'll just give you one confirmation number. And I'm gonna provide the shipping date today. And there's some comment. and submit. So now the confirmation has been delivered uh, and uh, through the, the native API implementations or the integrations, the purchase order should show up into the uh, S4 HANA system. It may take few seconds, but uh, while uh, we are waiting on that, uh, I'll also release the, the shipment notice saying that, uh, that uh, the, okay, now let's go back to, as it is already confirmed, it's the, the purchase order shifted into, into the inbox itself. It's like um, uh, now if we go back to orders and releases, uh, so still we are in a supplier's, supplier uh, portal here. And now you can see here it's been confirmed the status. Now I'm gonna do a ship notice. And I'm gonna put ASN some number and as I mentioned here, I'm gonna be delivering today and then rest all just making sure the line item still iPhone 7, 128 GB, okay, looks good. And then I'm shipping, submit. So now these two uh, transactions which been sent from a supplier side should be reflected back again as the purchase order. Uh, now let's go back to the purchase order and see if it is already received and updated. 
Now let's switch the gears a little bit. Now let me refresh it. As it's a, these are demo systems, it takes a few seconds, but uh, in a real time, in the real uh, pro, uh, the provision, uh, real systems, it should be a fraction of seconds. You should see the, all the uh, back end flow, the messages. Now let's see if we can, let me jump into the manage purchase orders and pick the line item, okay. So let's go to a supplier confirmation. So OC is received, shipment is on the way I guess, so it should be available right away. Uh, as soon as the shipment is uh, also received as a, as the, uh, the person of a warehouse clerk, I think if you look at here, so from an S4 side, I have a person of a warehouse clerk also. As soon as the receipt uh, need to, as soon as the item is being received, I can post in a receipt against the purchase order. So that way the supplier should be able to ready for invoice for that iPhone. So to do even a post a receipt, I need to have that uh, the shipment is received. So let me refresh it again, just to make sure. Let me go back uh, quickly. And while we are waiting on that, let's go back to see how the status has been showing for the employee perspective. So now I can see, go back here, 42. I should be able to see the purchase order number and uh, the comments. Now, if we, again, uh, I hope it's received. Let me refresh one more time. Okay, let's go to manage purchase orders again and pick the line item and go to the supplier confirmation control. Yeah, now I do received it. Now I'm good to go and issue a receipt. Now let's go back to the overall complete workflow. Now I want to post receipt again is the purchase order and then pick the line item that uh, shows that okay I did receive it Oops. I did receive so I don't want to change anything okay select the line item all you do is select and then post the receipt so that a supplier can issue the invoice again is the receipt so now all these end-to-end uh, -end experience or the integrations is all out of the box, as I mentioned earlier, that one is the, that is the biggest aspect. Uh, now if we go back to the supplier, I should be able to see the, the status of the purchase orders. Now it's only shipped, so if I refresh it, I should be able to see it as, as a received status. I think uh, it's gonna take a few seconds, I think. Uh, now let's switch, go back and come back to see. And uh, uh, as uh, this is also another aspect from a supplier point of view, these are all the provided analytics, embedded analytics, where he should be able to see uh, how many purchase orders uh, behind the scene is all the SAP cloud analytics coming into the picture. And uh, when a user is trying to respond to the source or catalog applications, the single sign on comes into the picture, all those uh, uh, reusable services. Now let's go back again to that purchase order. So that way we can issue an invoice. Okay, it shows the order status as received. Now I'm good to go and I create a standard invoice. And then I will say it as a INV. And then I'm just removing the taxes for this, I think. Uh, the current setup is doesn't accept the taxes. Okay, uh, looks good. All the invoice looks good. Okay, now I submitted the invoice, and again, a few within a few seconds, it should be able to post again as the purchase order in the backend ERP system. But uh, I'll pick the <coughs> previously sent some purchase order so that way we can see how exactly it's 
uh, is being posted against, uh, let me pick one purchase order rather than we wait for the whole invoice to show up here. So I did send out a few of the purchase orders uh, before this session so that way we can pick one of it and say these are all the invoiced ones. So let's pick four, four or five. So I'm gonna copy the request. So this is how you should be able to see the whole history. This is all activity and employees should be able to track where exactly that iPhone is, whether it is being delivered and uh, to and uh, whether the receipt is being confirmed and uh, whether the invoice is properly applied into it. So I'm gonna pick this purchase requisition and go back to the S4 and search for that requisition. So many, okay, where is it? Okay, I'll pick one line item. And if we go to a process flow, this is how the whole end-to-end -end flow looks like. So purchase a requisition got created with the approval or, or the workflow configuration. Uh, it has a purchase order created or, and then once the supplier has been confirmed, the item has been received and then the warehouse clerk uh, issued a receipt saying that uh, the item has been received and then the supplier created the invoice and then which got uh, posted back into the financial module and this completely shows the end-to-end -end process for few scenarios which is the indirect spend which is uh, uh, the uh, from uh, a tactical uh, level uh, uh, the processing and now let's switch back uh, to our presentation so okay so this is the whole uh, the demo life cycle and then uh, Let's understand the key takeaways. Basically what we are saying is with the help of IEA strategy, we are building the blocks, key building blocks to help the, uh, the user experience for the customer point of view and uh, harmonizing the experience, not only a, a UX level, how the, the service provisioning and consumption of the service end to end is been uh, improved the experience and with the help of uh, embedded uh, intelligence, it will help the customers to take proactively actions versus a reactive. And then uh, it provides a unified experience across uh, the whole, uh, the end to end four business process for any organization if they want to adopt uh, all those four business processes. That, uh, let's open up for the questions, if any. Uh, first of all, uh, the approval flow is uh, still uh, uh, resident on uh, S4ANA, I That's assume. Right. Okay. That's right. And the big question is, what if uh, the product is not in the catalog? The, uh, that's uh, where, uh, sorry, f uh, this is one, and the other one. That's right. Uh, we are from Italy, so we are uh, uh, compelled to pass through SDI and uh, B2B. So how this uh, is um, integrated uh, with Ariba, with the invoicing of the vendor? Yeah, sure. Uh, so the two questions. One is the how the workflow, right? Uh, so the, based on the use cases, uh, any organization should be able to define their workflow. So if you look at here, uh, I think, uh, let me see, here we go. So uh, here, based on uh, the item, what has been provisioned, we can have a workflow created saying that it has to be uh, either directly procured or created a purchase order if there is a relationship between the supplier. If it is not, then the, uh, the organization should be able to create uh, on-demand uh, uh, the, um, sourcing with a known uh, suppliers or invite or create a completely a sourcing event and invite some suppliers. If it is a, depends on the scenarios. If it is a direct materials versus indirect material, 
then uh, if it usually if it is uh, the sourcing comes into the picture if you are doing a long term the whole uh, and a volume based uh, purchasing then it makes sense to have that sourcing event and you have negotiate with the customer and create a contract versus in an iphone scenario i think uh, i cannot negotiate with an apple doesn't make sense it doesn't matter they will give you always the 400 i'm just giving an example so in this case yeah you can spend you can create a rules where you can within your workflow saying that certain categories of items can create an auto orders versus or an, uh, some uh, sourcing event need to be initiated. That kind of workflow can be configured basically. Coming back to the second question, as I was referring that uh, the out of the, when a source to pay process has been provisioned, the key fundamental uh, guidelines for uh, the whole IES program is that uh, the integration between S4 and Ariba network out of the box, it is available. So when that, uh, once the supplier has been onboarded, basically uh, the, any organization when they create a purchase order, the purchase order should be able to navigate or uh, directly integrated to the Ariba network seamlessly uh, as a standard configuration. So the customers doesn't need to do or uh, do a technical integration with the Ariba network. Does it answer your question? It is possible to create uh, purchasing catalogs in S4HANA on-premise. Uh, they want to start only this S4HANA and Ariba may be used. Yes, exactly. Uh, sure, yes. Uh, I think the overall, I think initially I pointed out within uh, the IEA strategy, this is where uh, this framework or the platform is going to provide us either we manage uh, S4 and uh, on cloud or on premise with the hybrid model. And then catalog based uh, in standard master data. Yes, even yep. the master data, the new, the one master data what we have been uh, talking about will be residing into the, in the cloud, but still it can be consumable for the on-prem world. And one uh, question about uh, strategy catalog management. In which tool is, is provided? The data management here. In data management. Uh, if we used MDG, then in MDG. If only as for HANA on-premise, then uh, they need to create catalogs in as for HANA for standard. Yeah, yeah? Uh, I think uh, I need to get back to you because I'm not an uh, uh, expert in the MDG scenarios. But, mm -hmm. uh, but as I know, uh, the M moving forward, all the central uh, master data management can be done in the cloud. It doesn't matter whether your application uh, S4 is sitting in the cloud or on-prem, you should be able to take the advantage of the, when we are using the uh, other LOB applications where they also dependent on the master data. So from an uh, S4 uh, on-prem or ECC world, we should be able to connect it to one master data service running on the cloud, which can be consumable through the all LOB applications. Yes, um, I would like to ask, uh, maybe it was part of the first question, but then I did get it. Yet the question is, how does an EDI scenario look like? Because your scenario, you, you typed in all the data manually, but no one really does that. It goes through EDI. So our vendors are connected with EDI and we receive, so they receive purchase orders on EDI from us and we receive all the invoices on EDI okay. from them. Are you referring to uh, the integrated suppliers where uh, the purchase orders go back to EDI or are you referring to the buyer side? It's a quite normal scenario. So we create a purchase order. The purchase order is sent out through uh, a messaging service. Mm -hmm. It's received by the vendor on the messaging service. The vendor replies back with an invoice maybe on a public network or on any other uh, common platform. Okay, I got yeah. it. Yeah, uh, typically like uh, um, the most of all the spend, uh, what we have been referring here in the source to pay process, by default uh, with the IES program, any purchase orders sent out from the S4 on-prem on or any ERP application uh, is directly pointed to to the Ariba network where you can invite all the suppliers within centrally. And then it depends on the, uh, the type of the suppliers. If the suppliers are a large organization, they don't prefer the portal, which uh, I was showing in the demo. They can have an option to connect back into their ERP system, which could, if they are using, a, again, S4 system, 
then uh, the connectivity either can choose either uh, how the uh, uh, connectivity whether it is a EDI model or it is I think uh, in, in the portal itself if we go back as a supplier I should be able to the supplier should be able to uh, choose how the data can be let me go back to see if I can show that now if I exit from a supplier point of view the supplier should be able to select hey I want to receive all my purchase orders back into let me see where is it company settings if I go back to electronic routing now based on the type of document types I can create a routing rules for the suppliers saying that hey you know what for purchase orders catalog orders with an attachment I want to either choose a CXML integration back into ERP system or through a e email or an EDI channel. So that way the EDI purchase, purchase order gets triggered into uh, EDI and uh, the suppliers should be able to consume back into the, their uh, ERP system whether it is an SAP or non-SAP system based on the choice they should be able to do it and also from a su supplier point of view we also provide the cloud integration gateway where with the help of few clicks they should be able to uh, consume back uh, the type of format they want to consuming into the uh, ERP system. Now, this supplier portal, it seems a new user interface. That's right, yeah, yeah. this is uh, for the demo. I just uh, enabled that beta testing mode, mm. but uh, it's going to be rolled out uh, in 1911 uh, with this release, 1911 or end of this uh, Q4. Mm. So that will give a complete user experience of uh, suppliers. But uh, otherwise, uh, this is how the old user, we are testing it, it is in the mode of testing, beta testing. We have been, uh, so I just want to take that uh, screens and present it to the demo. So that way this is what uh, upcoming. So upgrading to that latest version of Ariba network, is it going to be aligned with upgrading also the private clouds for or the customers have their own private uh, Ariba uh, system? Uh, the uh, Ariba network is a more a multi-tenant mode. It's not specific to uh, customers similar to S4. So this is, a, uh, this is the same portal. Uh, if the suppliers, I think uh, the way we see in uh, Ariba network is like we have a wide, uh, around 4 million suppliers. So within the 4 million suppliers, we have a different categories, small suppliers who doesn't log in into the portal quite often. Once uh, one order per month, or few orders uh, for the whole year. So they completely rely on this portal. They don't uh, have a their own tenant mode kind of thing, as well as uh, the, uh, there are some suppliers who have a medium suppliers. They quite uh, often they log in into, into the portal. Still, it's all, uh, they either, they take the actions on this portal or if they want to consume back into small ERP systems like QuickBooks or some other applications, they have the connectivity. And a large customer suppliers who were the uh, either SAP uh, suppliers or non-SAP Oracle suppliers, if they want to consume back into the ERP system, Yes, that's where the connectivity, what I was referring, the cloud integration gateway would help them to log in and uh, configure the integration module back into the ERP systems. That is also going to be available. What about the buyer side? Yes. Uh, the buyer side? The buyer side who use Ariba, current, current buyers who use uh, Ariba. Are they going to be also upgrade their systems to that new version of? Yes, um, I think uh, that's what the rollout strategy has been uh, worked out in their, uh, the readiness teams, like uh, how exactly the rollout should be done, whether it's a switcher to see the user interface uh, for the customer so that way they can play around with the, uh, uh, with the new interface and then as soon as they are comfortable with uh, the suppliers they are going to accept saying that I'm switching over. It's a self-service for the uh, suppliers we are trying to provide to adopt the, the new uh, user experience. So but these upgrades for the buyer side and for the supplier side they don't have to be aligned? I mean they don't have to happen because um, these two the are different time. applications, yes. right? So yes. uh, different personas. So both are going to be independent. So buyers' uh, rollout model will be separately done at uh, their um, uh, uh, adoption mode, as well as for the suppliers also separate. It doesn't need to be connected because uh, both are completely different target audience. But you are still transferring objects from one to another. Objects are the same. 
uh, yeah, like, uh, uh, yeah. Yeah, there is, uh, I mean, uh, the integration uh, API alignment between the applications S4 and uh, Ariba network still intact. The only thing is alignment, uh, is the domain model alignment. There is no changes because the number of fields is not going to be impacted. The messages would be the same. So the user experience is what uh, we are rolling out to make sure it is in compliance with the Fiori standards, where you can see the same footer, header, and actions in a specific locations. Those are all the guidelines which would be impacted for the buyers as well as the suppliers also. And the upgrade to the latest version of Ariba network, does it require upgrading the back end to, the, no, to S4 no. HANA? Or? No, not required. No. Because this is completely for the S supplier side, right? It is independent of it. Yeah, it doesn't need to be. All right, thank you. A question. During the, the keynote, it has been mentioned that all the the direct uh, the direct uh, purchasing must be done in S4 and the non-direct in uh, Ariba. Why not a guideline with everything on Ariba? Sorry, uh, can you repeat that one more time? During the keynote, it has been mentioned that uh, the good practice is to do all the direct purchasing inside S4 HANA and all the non-direct purchasing on Ariba. So, yeah. So, as I was referring earlier, the whole spend management we see in three different categories. One is the direct spend, indirect spend, and the service spend, right? So with the overall uh, alignment between the, uh, all the LOBs, participant LOB applications, as for uh, Ariba application, and uh, so the guided buying would be acting as a front-end applications for helping the indirect spend which is uh, what we are referring as a Ariba has been uh, uh, to handle all the indirect spends. Whereas the direct spend, which is completely done uh, based on your workflows and uh, uh, the configuration on the S4 side itself to see if the thresholds has been uh, below the threshold. So that way, the out based on the outline agreements, the purchase orders gets triggered. Uh, from the S4 system itself, there is no user involvement need to be done where the guided buying doesn't come into the picture. So that is the, uh, uh, the point what uh, in the keynote has been mentioned, saying that uh, indirect spend going via through the, uh, through the Ariba applications back. But the, if you look at it, the guided buying acts as the front-end application for the back-end procurement engine, which is the S4 system. So based on the spend, uh, user requisition versus auto requisition is the change between uh, those two direct and indirect spend scenarios. So indirect is what uh, the triggers, but uh, if you look at the uh, direct requires, uh, there is a whole uh, uh, the workflow configuration need to be done basically. So you choose uh, the direct spend in the scenarios where you have a plant productions, right? I uh, have a, a process for building, a, like for example, let's take an example of a car manufacturing unit, right? So there, I don't need to wait for uh, somebody to create a purchase order to order the tires or something like that. So basically, you define the whole process on uh, the level of uh, raw materials need to be available within your production plant. So you configure uh, so at the thresholds. As soon as the threshold number of the tires in the in the uh, in the warehouse it gets reduced, it triggers a purchase order based on the outline agreement or uh, an agreement between the supplier and then. Uh, it sends an auto purchase order, and then they fill that uh, materials back into the your warehouse. Basically, that's how um, typically where uh, direct materials are done for manufacturing units, and uh, indirect spend is more in a oper uh, operational day-to-day -day office level activities. Basically, the last block supplier inventory. Uh -huh, that's right. That, that's part of the uh, supply chain collaboration. What Ariba Network provides today where uh, the suppliers should be able to provide the inventory what they are capable of uh, 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 supporting the buyers because buyers do send all the forecasting information saying that, hey, for the whole year, I need these many raw materials because based on my planning, this is what I would be consuming it. And then uh, the suppliers would also say that, hey, this is all the inventory which I can 
support you versus uh, I cannot do that uh, on this time period, holiday time period, something like that. So that way the buyers have a backup plan to make sure that, hey, I can make sure onboard a new suppliers and all those things, yes. So within the invoicing, there are two aspects. Uh, what we see is one is the receivables versus payables, right? So Ariba is going to be helping to creation of the uh, receivable items. Whereas in the S4 side, if you see in this slide, which talks about the open text management, which is the, the invoice management uh, has been uh, added as an add-on module to make sure handle all those uh, payable items on that side. Reconciliation again is depends on how the process for a customer is a two-way reconciliation or versus it. However, they do it. That's right. Yeah, because. Uh, two different phases, right? One is that from a supplier point of view, I'm, in, I'm creating the invoices versus I'm paying the invoices. How long I can hold that payment is what will give a benefit from an or buying organization versus, okay, if I go to pay earlier, then uh, I can negotiate a discount pricing and all those, yes. Like uh, if, you have, if you are dealing with a lot of uh, suppliers in different countries, the same item could be uh, taxed differently because of the uh, government rules and regulations, right? So then uh, Ariba doesn't provide that service. So we do consume the uh, third party external APIs who they are specialized in to they keep the latest update, uh, uh, update with all the uh, governance and compliance perspective. So we consume like based on the invoice, um, the what we can call it as uh, the organizations build to address or those scenarios we do uh, call those APIs to make sure that it integration that's right yeah 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 and even a digital signature also some countries requires e invoices to be delivered for the buyers so we do uh, partner APIs with the third party that's, that's right, yeah. So when an invoice is created based on the country code uh, for that invoice, it gets uh, called the partner service to uh, to get, uh, especially these uh, digital signatures comes into the picture for South America region where they have a different compliance and different rules and regulations. So we have a partners for each country. So we do seamlessly integrate and then making sure that the digital copy invoice also attached into the purchase in the invoice and then delivered back into the uh, S4 system. Right now it is not, I think there was a proof of concept was uh, initiated to see how it can be integrated with the uh, blockchains to verify our digital signatures. I think it is not available yet uh, for the customers. We have been, uh, exploring those options as a POC is to see how we can leverage or make sure the identity of the issue or who has been, is it really part of the blockchain or not track and trace concepts. No, no, this is already in production. Yes. Most, most of the, uh, as I was referring, uh, the, let me go back to the roadmap, right? So uh, today, all these, uh, the whole uh, S2P process is available today for customers, but it's more the customer has to do the technical integration, API integration, they have to do it. Versus with this 1911 release or next 20, 2002, when any customer starts provisioning a new in, uh, source to pay, by default, all these will be available as a standard configuration. Customer doesn't need to do that integration connectivity between guided buying S4 or S4 to Ariba network or a contract and all those will be out of the box available as a standard configuration. That's the big difference. So with one click self-service, all gets provisioned with the help of a guided saying that, okay, I want to now implement only sourcing and contracting scenario. Then by default, the provisioning will be done configuration will be applied uh, and uh, user experience will be end to end uh, where the user should be able to navigate cross product navigation with the help of that it is available. But today, as of today, without all this IES, you have an option, all these options, but customer has to do the integration. 
how do we do that? That's the biggest pain point for everybody, which uh, IES has been trying to solve, saying that with the help of this, seamlessly everything works out of the box. Yes, yes. So there are a couple of scenarios supported today, like uh, we have a large suppliers who already uses their own uh, uh, e-digital signature service. They should be able to directly create the signature and uh, verify it with the tax authority of that government. And then they should be able to directly send an integrated e-invoice back into the Ariba network through the CXML channel or EDI channel or whatever the channel with adding the PDF as an attachment. Then the invoice is gonna be routed back to the ERP system, keeping that the digital signature PDF as an attachment so that it will be available in the S4 system. That's right, yeah. So as a, as a, this, is a, uh, this is where, where we are trying to address some of the features is that uh, uh, the suppliers are already have a relationship with the buyers and buyers enforces the overall the business rule process saying that hey you need to first send an order confirmation then only you will be allowed to send invoice they, those are all business rule enforcement right so that is today buyer dictates the supplier saying that hey you have to follow this process so only to support those process, the suppliers log in into the portal and do their just job saying that, okay, I just want to do it because customers have been asking. But uh, what we are trying to uh, improve, like uh, we are trying to compare with the Facebook versus this thing where we go daily and check, hey, how do, where are my friends are doing, what are they doing? And similarly, we are providing kind of a analytics or embedded intelligence for the supplier saying that, hey, this is how you are doing are performing today in this category, in this industry, and how other suppliers are being uh, doing it. How do you can improve your overall performance to attract more buyers? So those kind of uh, enhancement intelligence we are uh, trying to embed into the portal. So that way, the suppliers can keep tracking of how do they can improve and all those aspects and constantly glued into the portal and they frequently come into the portal. Yeah, the, from the supplier side, yes, notification, as well as we also have the mobile uh, application where they should be able to do all these activities which I was showing, like uh, they should be able to accept it, invoice it with the, with, within the uh, mobile application. But if I'm the vendor, when I invoice So you, okay, so if I understand your question, so basically the invoice, as I was referring to the integrated scenarios, right? If I am a supplier who has my own ERP system, yeah. so I should be able to create an invoice directly from my ERP system, rather than coming into the portal. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, you should be able to do that, yes. Yeah, yep, yes, it's also the supported. So just I was taking a simple scenario in this demo, but yeah, it, it supports, yes. Good, thank you.